we are one of the clubs who, who work very much in making sure we stretch ourselves commercially and that we're growing. And we are very right. We've launched the store, which is doing very, very well, and we have intentions to launch other stores. The issue for us also is making sure that our supporters have access to the merchandise. A lot of supporters come here to the village as a destination, and we felt it doesn't make sense to tell them to go to Southgate or else they could find everything here. So it's a matter of also being able to service our supporters in-house with the village being a huge destination. Our branches come here. Uh, I don't know, really if you've been here during a derby weekend, you've seen, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's full for, for about three or four days. And also we, we do a lot around uh, sending stuff out to the branches and making sure there's access to, to, to merchandise, membership and all of that. We've also seen what, what the likes of rugby and other international teams do and are, are looking to implement certain innovations that even will stretch us beyond what they're doing you know you know we're looking at also partnering with the right retail partners to also make sure that we we commercially in terms of our merchandise are able to to generate the money because it can't we can't purely rely on sponsorships or just gate takings we need to have a diverse uh, income stream we went to to namibia did very well in Namibia. I had a very successful campaign. We went to Botswana before, went to Swaziland, and obviously it was an opportunity, first of all, for the team to camp, but also to go and access and engage with our supporters in, in, in Lesotho. And unfortunately, it was uh, cancelled, postponed, and we look forward to other opportunities. You know, for us, it's very important to take the brand to other supporters within the continent. We, we have huge support. You see it even with the people on Facebook, but also even on the website. You see huge penetration into Botswana and other countries. I mean, we have representation in all the countries, actually. We'll be launching our new online store, uh, which is being revamped right now, because we're finding that with the international communities, um, online uh, purchases are a lot easier. Uh, also, you know, our partnerships, obviously, Nike's doing quite a large expansion into the rest of Africa. Um, merchandise being available through also local <coughs> South African retailers who've gone into like an Edcon, you know, and, and then those kind of, uh, of retailers who are in other countries, we then would be able to drive people there. But certainly our online sales mm. is what we're looking to grow very much. We get requests from Brazil, even for stickers, and we've got, we got requests internationally. You know, the nice thing is the UK, even if you do get requests from the UK, the UK do have access with the Nike, with the stores, uh, with Nike featuring uh, our merchandise there. But yeah, Japan, I have to say, we, Japan. yeah, Japan, there's interest. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting. In fact, one of the most successful campaigns for me, which I enjoyed doing, uh, was working with Nike when we did the curation range for the 2006 uh, campaign. And to be at the World Cup in Germany and to see shop front windows with Kaiser Chief stuff was absolutely amazing. And it was a very successful campaign internationally. But certainly, I think the curation range was a separate campaign that um, had merchandise across the world um, and very unique merchandise like we said it was a very stylistic curation range also told the history of the club so when you walked into a store it had pictures of the chairman the different aspects of the team old players and really told the story you know um, and, and told the South African story footballing story so I think that also was was very unique but the work around soccer X was 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 amazing because not only did we work in Dubai we did a lot of stuff around soccer X in London and a lot of uh, visits around the UK as well the, I must say what has grown is the web Moby site. I'm sorry, we're averaging about 2.2 million views, yeah. And we'll be launching some other exciting, exciting things around there. I don't know if I can say anything, digital things. We're sitting now on Facebook. 549. Okay, so we're going to... Today is 549. But you know, we'll run a campaign and it'll be viewed by... Millions. The cities, okay, we're looking and we and we need to put internationally, Facebook, it's Botswana, Zimbabwe, it was the United States of America, the UK, Namibia, these are just the, the, some of the top ones. And Languages, Norway. Norway, definitely, I was saying Japan. Um, yeah. Norway, even before, but also when Shettle was here, yeah. we had we invited Actually. a whole delegation here. Yeah. They took membership and we, we did a whole lot of stuff. But also we got a lot of German speaking people, Indonesians who are on us, Portuguese. Uh, we are building a gymnasium, I can disclose that. There are developments happening around the main precinct of the village uh, and um, a facility that we feel will enhance uh, the training of our team. And I'll stop. Well, I think you know the chairman's passion for, for, for development and all, always looking at best of breed. 
and, and obviously Barcelona have done very well with their development and it's part of um, the work that he's doing to make sure that the development really gets a revamp and changes. So yeah, his passion for the <laughs> development is certainly there and uh, we'll watch the space as he continues to work on that project.